Your name? Irena Gut. You will be in charge of supervising the Jews. Your survival will depend on that. I have until July 22nd to make sure that this entire sector is Jew free. We have no place to go. I saw a place where I can hide you, where no one would ever think of looking for you. Hi, Sophie. How are you doing? Nice to speak good to you. Good for you. Nice I'm good. Very, I'm very good. Thank you. So, congratulations on the movie. It's uh, well, very hard hitting, to say the least. Um, <laughs> yeah. But no, congratulations. Because I mean, it's a really, really tough role to, to to kind of navigate and pull off, and you did it really, really well. So, congratulations on that. Thank you so much. So, the first thing I want to ask you about is obviously this is unfortunately it's based on a true story, you know, but it's a true story that mm. um, the protagonist couldn't actually share, and I don't think she could share it until kind of mid seventies, I think it was. So. Um, yeah, I think she was confronted by someone who who claimed that the this hadn't nothing, none of this had actually happened. So she kind of confronted them back with this. She kind of retorted with with this story, you know, that, that what happened to her. So how how did you actually come across the story? Was it the actual script when it reached you, or, or were you aware of this story maybe when it, when it was a play beforehand? Off Broadway? Yeah, no, I had never. Um, yeah, I had. I, I knew. I had never heard of the story actually. Right. It's only once I'd finished the script that I heard it had been on Broadway. Um, but I fell in love with with her story. I mean, in love. I, I mean, I was baffled by the yeah. by the events, um, and immediately felt the need to do some more extensive research. And I read her bio biography that was um, written by Dan Gordon, who wrote the script and who had written the play, um, and then met up over Zoom with Dan, who told me a little more more about Irina and the person that she was. And managed to find some archives from when, like you said, she finally decided to speak up. Um, she then made it her mission to tell her story to everyone and um, went on a lot of TV shows to talk about it. And so I managed to find glimpses of her in her 60s and 70s. And um, and I, yeah, felt very compelled and, and felt the need to to share her story with the world. I mean, luckily she she survived what she went through, but sadly she passed away in I think it's, was it two thousand and two she passed away. Yeah. But I believe that her daughter Jeannie has been very involved in the the whole process. No, can you tell us a little yeah, bit about we... what input she provided and and how how supportive and how helpful she's been in in the whole filming process? Yeah, she, we actually reached. Um, she wasn't really put in. I, we weren't really put in contact until the movie was over. Actually, um, right. I'm not in the logistics of, of that I think there was some miscommunication um but yeah I, I got in touch with her after the movie was finished um but she was very implicated in the post-production and and in um she's made it her life's mission to also spread her mom's message um and so she's been very implicated in the, the promotion of the film and we've done multiple interviews together and we um we met in person at TIFF, and so that was a very emotional experience for both of us. I'm, I'm curious. I mean, you mentioned that it, it played at TIFF. It also played at a couple of Jewish festivals, not the JCC Chicago and the Boston Jewish Film Festival. I'm curious. I mean, especially in these times that, that, that all the things are going on right now, how how well was that? I mean, I imagine it was received with really, really open arms. But how how what was the feedback from the audience at those two festivals, particularly? People seem to receive it um, very well. It's it's obviously, um, you know, I I made this movie because it shared such an important message, and, and to see that people are responding to it well really warms my heart. And and the testimonies that I get afterwards, and people come up to me and with teary eyes, and and feel like I mean, feel very connected, and feel like they have a voice, and and feel listened to and understood, um, which is always important with every character that I that I choose. Um, and also just, uh, for me, it was so much pressure to live up to the expectations and to fill the shoes of, of Irina, because she's led such an incredible life and accomplished so many things. So if I can just kind of live up to the expectations and, and, and share her story in, in, in the right way and, and, um, give her life justice, it, it felt very important to me. So, so far, um, no one's come to me with, um, bad reviews uh, and hopefully there people will only take the, the positive out of this film no i mean the reason i asked is because obviously in this film Irena, she's she's kind of appreciated like part of the family and she's she becomes almost jewish in a way is, is, mm -hmm. that, is that kind of how you felt almost 
playing this part and then taking it to festivals and things like that. They must have really kind of embraced you as part of their family, no? Their community after seeing the film, no? Yeah, I definitely feel um, somewhat closer to their communi community. And, and I went to present it the other day um, in Toronto and they gave me this beautiful gift. I, 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 it, it, it just, it, it feels like almost like I'm an imposter because I feel like I haven't done that much. And, and the recognition that I get in return is is so much and they're just so grateful. And I feel like I'm almost undeserving of all of this love and attention because um, all I did was so little compared to what she's done. And um, yeah, but they, they've been so generous with me and it's, it's a very overwhelming um, rush of, of love and emotion that I get in return. No, no, it's curious that you, you say that, that I, I can imagine her just kind of putting myself in her shoes. I can imagine her thinking that she wasn't really doing anything and she was just mm -hmm. doing what she felt right. No, and, and she doesn't kind of, kind of, she didn't, I don't think she really realized just how important the things that she, I mean, everything that was going on, all the deaths. I mean, I don't want to give anything away from the film, but we see some really, really cruel, harsh moments in there. And despite all of that, she's just, she's got this sense of humor and she's, and just kind of goes about her life as if normal almost. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's really what I admire her so much about her is that, you know, when I try to put myself, like you said, in her shoes, and I don't know what I would do in that situation, because it's such it's such a big dilemma. It's it's saving your life or someone else's um, because she's compromising her life by doing so. And, and, and so um, I, I hope I would do the same as her. But I honestly don't we we can't know what we do in that position um and like you said what really struck me when when doing all my research and and finding all of these clips of her is how positive she still was despite everything and despite all the horrific events that she's been through she's still so full of light and joyful and and, and still sees the best in people and the best in life and that's really something that was important for louise the director and i to showcase in the movie was her strength and, and resilience and how she was so nurturing and kind and positive despite everything. Mm -hmm. Also, I mentioned earlier that it was um, it was an, an off-Broadway play previously. Um, did you speak with the, the actress who played Irene in, in the play at all? Was there any conversation um, there with her at all? No? Uh, I did not. I think it was also important for me um, to... I think sometimes it can be a little overwhelming to... to to have too many things to rely on. Right. And so I yeah. think I kind of wanted to focus on the script because her, her life is so vast um, and there's so much that she's accomplished. And even before the war, she was a nurse. She was already devoted to helping people. Um, and so trying to crumble everything and, and, and cramp everything into like an hour and a half or two hours, um, it already feels like when I watch it, I'm I feel like we need to tell so much more and explain so much more and give so many, so much more details. And it already feels like we're cutting so much um, that I kind of just wanted to focus on the script and, and, and not lose sight of what's important in this specific movie, because we could do a spinoff of so many of her life's events. So yeah, it was important for me to maybe focus a little more on, on the script itself. I would say that though, I mean, when, when you read the script, you always, and, and you said you did your research, you read a memoir and you, you, you watched interviews and things like that. You really, I mean, you don't want to, nobody, like I didn't know who she was either previously. So you don't really want to kind of mimic exactly how she was, but I imagine there were certain aspects of her life that you wanted to be able to portray as an actress. So did, who did you speak to? Or did you, did you do anything specifically to kind of, to nail exactly how she might've been during that time? I mean, I, I know that, uh, the writer Dan was yeah. spent a lot of time with her, so I imagine you you had a lot of conversations with him, maybe about that. Yeah, definitely spoke a lot to Dan, and he was there on the first few days of shooting, um, and he just yeah from the get go, like I mentioned earlier, said that she was just so bright, and I think we really wanted to showcase that. But also, it's so hard because um, I have no footage of how she was in her twenties, and and even if I had, the thing that's particular with the movies that there's not a lot of moment where she's not stuck in a position of, of fear and having to put up this facade and just kind of like, even though she's herself, she's kind of operating on, on pilot mode where she just has to get through the day and, and not let her emotions get in her way or not let her impulsiveness get in the way and stay sort of rational and do the, the right thing um, in order to be able to protect them as, as much as she could. And there's so many scenes with the, with the major, um, 
where she has to hide everything that's going on in her in her brain and her emotion because she needs to keep this straight stern uh face that that can't let anything any hint uh otherwise she would be caught um and so it, it was kind of hard also to show that like bubbly naive side to her because she's always faced with conflict and it's kind of like operating on 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 um on adrenaline almost um so yeah I yeah I try I tried to show little there are tiny moments of levity in the script um where she seems to be letting her guard down especially with the um, Jewish people that's kind of when you see her smile the most and you see how caring she is and in, in the eye contacts and in in the way she is but other than that it's she's on like she's serving and she you know is I would imagine looking, I, I observed a lot of like Schindler's List and, and Boy in the Striped Pajamas and people are just, you know, so straight and, and, and stuck and, and so scared always or like walking on eggshells constantly. And that's kind of how I did that part of her. You said that, that you, you watched Schindler's List to kind of get an idea. You, one of the, uh, the actors that you worked with was actually in Schindler's List now, the butler, was it Schultz, his name, I think, isn't it? Was it Schultz? He was actually in Schindler's List. Did you pick his brains a bit about that, about having been on set there? Um, I I did not actually. I didn't. I. You didn't know that. I did not know he was in that. He was. Yeah, actually, actually, wow. Um, I I did not. I mean, honestly, when I watched all those movies, I've I watched so many. I I think I I did all of them. Sophie's Choice and 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 so I think I was. I did not even know that he was in it, but he um, was the sweetest, sweetest man and and brought such a beautiful energy on set because it just feels like he has this, such a long career that he's so at peace with where he's at and, and brought a very um, caring and and almost like my, my guardian angel um, on set. And it didn't feel like he needed to prove anything. Um, and, and there was no sense of, of ego or hierarchy and he was just like my my sweet grandfather on set and so calm and always in his little corner not wanting to disturb anyone um and it was some beautiful experience I would I would get lost in his performance just sitting there and, and watching him act in a way that felt so natural and and easy and flowed so beautifully and and it was such a treat know, to he, be he able to fantastic in that. I mean, he had a little bit of levity as well whenever he'd say I don't want to know anything it was just yeah kind of funny but not funny at the same time yeah it was great yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I can't not, we're running out of time, so I can't not speak to you about your, your relationship with Major, is it Rugomer? That's so many different yeah. names there, with Dugre. That must have been so complicated. Like you said, you had to be kind of like with your poker face, but at the same time, you have to kind of share this relationship that is, it starts off purely platonic, but then it, it does, on his side, it kind of, kind of gets, it takes a turn. I don't want to give anything away, but that must have been really complicated to work, kind of that evolution with Dugre. How did you prepare that with, with him? Yeah, I think, well, we both liked that relationship because it shows that it's not all black and white and that people that commit terrible crimes are still humans deep down. And and and, um, and I think his character is super, is very interesting because I think deep down he wishes he was like Irina. He's put in a position where, I mean, we all have a choice, but he, to some extent, doesn't have a choice. And I think he... Um, he sees a lot of, uh, he sees all the beautiful sides that Irina has and he, and he wishes he could be a, a bit more like her and it, and, and it develops and, and, and which is why he falls in love with her and it, and, and it becomes really twisted in a way at the end. And, and I think without ever liking Rugamer, she also develops some sort of, it's like a mutual agreement. I wouldn't say it's respect that they find for each other, but it's definitely some sort of mutual agreement and understanding of what the, of the position they're both in and what they're both going to do in order to save lives and and he was actually uh, Rugamer later on was uh, named grandfather to um, yeah, um Roman yeah. because he despite doing terrible things to Irina did actually keep the secret so in some way did also indirectly save lives um and so yeah, it's it's a very it's it's a very weird gray zone um that we had to navigate and um and I think they both grow fond of each other in in, in different ways. 
Yeah, it was. I think it's also kind of a weird gray relationship with him as well for the for the viewers because I don't. I mean, there's, there's loads of films that I probably haven't seen, but I don't remember seeing a film where the, a Nazi's kind of feels almost sorry for what's going on. Because I mean, he, mm-hmm. and he says that he, if he, if his mother could see him, he would she would be ashamed of what he's become. Yeah, which I don't. It was kind of kind of hard for me to watch because you don't see those kind of things in, in films about Nazis. Mm-hmm. No, definitely, and and he he had such a he really brought a a human side to that character, and and again, I I love what I think is beautiful about this movie is that you're left not really knowing where you stand because there is no right answer as the audience you i think it's the duality of liking and hating him at the same time really well listen we're after time so thank you so much for your time sophie it's been thank really nice so to meet much. you and i wish you the best of luck with the film and hope to speak to you again sometime soon thank you i hope so too all right take care of yourself i received a letter that i've been hiding jews in my house Does it matter who we are? What we do is who we are. I think we should have faith. Because if we don't, something else will die inside of us too.